Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Carolina Justice Report, brought to you by the lovely law firm and South Carolina Law TV. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Attorney Justin Lovely, and my lovely wife, Miss Amy Lawrence Lovely, and wife me. and law partner. Uh, we're going to talk to you about motorcycles today. We're going to give a brief overview in this episode. Um, again, look for our newsletter, a hard newsletter, and our e-newsletter. If you want to sign up, just let us know or comment. And without further ado, let's get it started, Amy. Yeah, 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 let's do. Okay, so a lot of people don't know this about us, but we've been riding motorcycles since we were little kids. Um, I, yep. mean, I mean, I had my first motorcycle at five years old, which sounds crazy now that we have babies that are little. I mean, we've got a six-year-old and an eight-year-old. The idea that I was riding a motorcycle at five, you know, I'm going to strangle my parents later. But they put the love of riding a bike um, very early, at least on, on me and my brother and my sister. And you've been riding dirt bikes since you were a kid as well. Yeah, we grew up. We grew up yeah, riding bikes, like, and so when we got adults, it was just like the natural progression to, to start, you know, to keep riding bikes. Right. And we grew up with dirt bikes. We had little XRs, Enduros, and took off riding our whole life and um, I never didn't grow up wanting to be a motorcycle injury lawyer. Enough. Huh? Do what? I said I never got past an XR80. I never got bigger than an XR80 because I wasn't tall enough to ride. Yeah. Definitely don't want to ride a bike that doesn't fit, for sure. No, 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 no. For sure. But right, yeah, so we didn't grow up wanting to be uh, motorcycle injury lawyers, but oh, that's the Lord hand we've knows. been dealt now. So yeah. we need to help people. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So we're doing, you know, we've done this revamp of our motorcycle um, injury division. We've got a new logo, all this really cool stuff. Because, I mean, we've got to have some street cred here. And um, and it's, it's a really cool logo. Matter of fact, you'll find it on our Facebook page. It's it's. It's really badass, for lack of a better word. So we're excited about that. Um, but we have a lot of people here in Myrtle Beach that come to us, and they need uh, they need help because they've been in a, in a motorcycle accident. And the majority of those accidents that we do are catastrophic, and it breaks our hearts. I mean, there's nothing. Right. I mean, just people call us and like, we need you to come to the hospital. And a lot of times, it's our friends because we've got to know so many people in the community. Um, it just it kills us. Um, so um, I know. You do the majority of that work of the motorcycle stuff. So let's talk about that. Um, tell us about like, what are we seeing? Like, what are like the threads, the commonalities um, when we when we get these motorcycle accidents in? Yeah, well, a lot of people don't uh, know this about us, but that's kind of how we got into personal injury law 10 years ago. Our first that's injury our first case, case. Yeah, yeah, our first injury case was a motorcycle case. Um, and unfortunately in that case, there was a minimum policy at play. And that is the worst thing for a motorcycle rider. I speak at these clubs. We send our associates to these motorcycle clubs. We go to rallies and we tell every rider, we go to the Harley Davidson dealership. We go to any, any rider who will listen to us. That insurance issue is the worst thing for a rider. And again, you've probably heard about me speak it and harp on it in the past. State minimums in South Carolina are only 25,000 bucks, 50,000 for the whole accident. And on a motorcycle, remember, there's no helmet law here in South Carolina. So if you go down, it's going to be, you know, the accident, is, it's going to be bad. So right. that, yeah. right, and that ER bill will suck up that money real quick. So a common thing we see is inadequate insurance, obviously, that's tough. The other thing we have to overcome here in Horry County is the uh, biker prejudice. That's a big issue. People think, hey, these bikers are outlaws. No, they're just like you and me. I mean, they're people on ride on the weekend. Part, my daddy, right? Right. They're just, they're good people. Professional really guy people. who likes to ride a bike and look cool. Best people, salt of the earth people. We Wonderful. love getting out in the community, the biker community, and meeting them and, and talking to them and, and just really hearing about their story and their life. A lot of, we have a lot of veterans who ride, uh, a lot of veteran lot community of riders down here. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we thank them for their service. They do a lot of good for the community. But yeah, that's but biker prejudice is a real thing, and we have to always think, keep that in mind when we're working a case. Um, if we had to put something that's significant money in front of a jury down here, um, but of course, you know, we go to trainings that we go to uh, twice a year. That I'm with that I'm a president elect of that NAML Association, the National Academy of Motorcycle Injury Lawyers, and this is a big topic that we discuss. And we meet. We're actually meeting uh, in August. Uh, in, in Milwaukee, and we're going to discuss this prejudice issue for two day, two whole days with attorneys from across the state. So, um, but getting back to your question, yeah, those are probably the the two big things that we see uh, with with our motorcycle docket. Okay, so if you're in a motorcycle accident, what should you do? 
Well, first thing, call 911, and hopefully you've been riding in a group. I tell everybody, don't ride alone, especially down here at the beach during tourist season. Do not ride alone. I know everybody wants to get the wind therapy and get out there on the road. Don't ride alone. you got to ride in a group. You know what? When I bought um, my first bike, I made it well, as an adult. Um, my dad, my mom and dad were really upset because I was 20 years old. And I made a pack with my dad that I would always ride in a pack. I would never go to. alone. I would never ride alone because they just won't see me. Right. Yeah, and that's the thing. They don't. They just won't see you. Our, our brains are not. When we get in a car, the driver. This is like a. This is like a phenomenon that people have, have studied. They. They're not trained. They're, you're trained to see a car. You're not trained to even see that bike. It could be right there, right next to you, and you just your your brain won't pick it up. It's it's crazy. They've done brain studies about this. They're so when you're riding. Mass. Right. right. So when you're riding in a group, you, you know, you, you do see it because you're hearing the, the rumbling, you know, the thunder of 10 bikes coming down the road. So that that can that can definitely help you out. Um, what was the question? I've kind of we started we went off on a different Sorry, topic here. I diverged into my daddy. I apologize. OK. Yeah. So um, like. What do we do if we get into a motorcycle? Yeah. So. Okay, oh, yeah, absolutely. So call 911. Obviously, um, you need to try to secure the scene and take as many pictures as possible. Um, and. Uh, the big thing with these with these motorcycle accidents, if you are dealing with a catastrophic claim, and either if you go down alone or if, you, if if a fellow rider goes down in your pack, try to figure out who these witnesses are because the rider may be taken off on an ambulance before the cops even get there to start working the scene. Ninety nine percent of the time, that's exactly what happens. So when you're riding right. a pack, and, everybody has to be responsible for gathering this information and getting pictures, names, whatever. Right. A lot of times because, it's just as easy as pulling out your camera and taking pictures or recording the situation. Right. And we, we, we need all that uh, all that evidence that we need that because here's here's an issue. The cops, going back to biker prejudice, could find the writer at fault even though it wasn't his fault. The yeah, writer can't speak up it. for himself. So we, it's imperative, and, and we've, we've turned the tide several times here in this office. Once they call and contact us, and then we get our investigation team on there. You know, we have two. We have a detective that we use, retired from Raleigh. We have a special forces officer from the Army that's one of our investigators. When we turn those two guys loose and they start getting the full picture, we realize, wow, this wasn't the rider's fault. This was this car. This was this truck. And you know, if, if any little picture, witness statement, anything that we can do, you know, can, can turn the thing tide. That turns the case, right? Right. Right, and then that could be, uh, uh, you know, going from getting no recovery to getting, you know, s several thousand dollars. So it's very important to protect the biker and the rider's family that we, that we secure those scenes. Um, another thing that we need to do after the accident, bikers always, you know, we're tough, right? We're tough guys. We ride motorcycles. So follow the doctor's orders. I always see um, the rider not wanting to do what the doctor's telling them to do or not telling the doctor everything that it's hurting them. You know, if you're having sleepless nights, if you're having memory loss, I mean, tell that to your doctor on these follow-up appointments because, I mean, you could have a brain injury not even know it. A lot of times we won't see those uh, brain injury or mild traumatic brain injuries manifest until six months, a year after the accident. So, and if you don't document it, it's going to be harder for us to prove in court uh, or, or pre-suit or pre to get you uh, paid for it. So, uh, Follow the doctor's orders. Don't try to be tough. If you got to go to an ortho, go to an ortho. If you got to go to physical therapy, go to physical therapy. Don't miss your appointments. And let's just follow the doctor's orders. That way we can work the claim up and, and get you full value for your case. Awesome. Okay, so how does the lovely law firm, how do you help motorcycle accident victims? What do you do? Tell us. Well, the first thing, I don't know if you've got, it's probably backwards because we're recording this, but Amy and I wrote this book. The, the Rider's Guide to South Carolina's uh, Motorcycle Laws. And that's available as a download in our, at our website. And also, I got the hard copies. We give them to everybody. We do. Um, and if you want one, just comment. We'll, we'll send you one. But um, uh, we handle it all. We handle the accident scene investigation. We handle the, the insurance claims. We follow your reports for you. We get your medical treatment set up. We handle any kind of medical liens you may have. If you need to treat and don't have health insurance, we can get you set up on a letter of protection with a provider. Um, we, we support your community if you're riding with your organization. Anything at all that you need as a rider, that's what we do. And of course, you know, in the in the injuries, you know, uh, injury claim process, we take it from start to finish, from from sign up to trial if we have to. Um, but that's what we do. We handle it all. Yeah, we do. Okay, Justin, tell us how everybody can reach us. 
Yeah, so you can reach us at 843-839-4111. Um, we're available on our website, justiceislovely.com. Uh, office 1053 London Street here in Myrtle Beach off 38th and Grissom. Uh, or you can find us here here when we do these video casts. Stay tuned for our podcast that's going to be coming out. Um, and we're going to deep dive into these issues with not only just Amy and myself, but community, community leaders and uh, we'll have some writer organization people who want to speak. We, we really plan to get the community involved in that podcast to really kind of get the word out and get the safety message across. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you soon. When life gets ugly, justice is lovely, the lovely law.